All right, y'all. I just got finished watching this Southern Charm, New Orleans. And this episode... Hmm. It has some interesting parts. We we start off where we left off. At the party with Reagan and Tamika going ballistic. And Jeff is drunk. And, every, you know, they decide to leave. So, Reagan and Barry leave. Jeff and Reagan leave. And they Jeff and Reagan proceed to get into this big argument. And in the argument... Jeff is slurring and he's going off and he's really not making a lot of sense. But essentially what he's basic, what I feel like he's saying is it's okay for you to do what you want to do. But when I go out and do what I want to do, then it's a problem. Anyway, but he gets angry. He jumps out the car. This fool is running through the streets in the middle of the night, running through the swamp and the woods and Tamika and Jeff come back because Reagan texts Tamika like, look, you know, he tripping. I need your help. And they are chasing this motherfucker through like until like three o'clock in the morning, um, because they keep giving you the timestamp. And eventually, Barry is able to get Jeff in the car and take him to the apartment in the French Quarter. This damn apartment in the French Quarter. So, the next day, you see, you know, every, again, everybody, you know how they do. It. Everybody's having their conversation. <clears throat> and Barry is talking to Justin, and he's like, look, Jeff was really off last night. I'm worried about him. You know, that when he was drinking, he's another person. He wasn't making sense. You know, you see Reagan and um, Tamika talking about it. Um, you know, so you see everybody kind of touching base. Reagan goes to the apartment in the French Quarter, and she finds Jeff on the floor asleep because it looks like they've signed a lease and they're moving in, but it doesn't look like they have a lot of furniture or anything yet. So, I find it interesting that he had a key to this apartment that she claimed he wasn't going to have nothing to do with, but whatever. Because clearly he had a key, he got in without her. And they proceed to talk, and you know, all Jeff has is apologies. Like, he's like, I'm sorry, look, I got drunk, I got fucked up, I'm sorry. Reagan is trying to make it into a federal offense. Now, I'm coming in on sideways on this situation. They clearly have had some marital issues before they started taping this show. Um, but I can only go by what I see. And what I see is that he got drunk, he was tripping, and yes, he might need to process the situation with his family. Um, but I, I just don't see it being the federal case that she's making it out to be. And again, I could be wrong, but it seems like everything that he does, she's trying to connect it to football and CTE. Um, even to the point where later on in the episode, they have another football wife on there and she's talking about how she's experiencing the same thing with her husband. He played for the Saints as well. And she's saying that, you know, I sent him to the grocery store with a list and he comes back with nothing on the list. Boo, that ain't CTE. That is a man. My daddy do it all the goddamn time and he ain't never played football for no team. You know what I'm saying? Like, my daddy don't never come back with what my mother sent him to the store for. But he be having $200 worth of groceries. And ain't shit on that list. So, I get it. If I were a football wife, I'd probably be sensitive to it. I'd probably be looking for looking for the boogeyman behind everything and looking for the symptom. But, again, I'm on the outside looking in. But I just don't think that every time they start tripping, it's connected to... CTE like I don't I just think sometimes it's just people being people and with Jeff again we're dealing with the situation where his whole family stole money from him and then got mad at him for having a problem with it and have written him off I mean to the point where his father was like I don't have a son anymore like that's what we need to be processing and yes he does I think he needs to talk to somebody Reagan said that she you know he needs to talk to somebody because she's not equipped to do it and I agree Reagan you're not you know, you're not a therapist, and that's what he needs. But the whole first 30 minutes of the episode was about Jeff and this argument and Jeff getting drunk and Jeff tripping. But what I find interesting is then we we switch gears to Jeff um, getting ready for Reagan's launch, her, her jewelry party. She's launching her um, some new pieces in her jewelry collection, and it's a men's line. And so Jeff is her business partner. 
and he's in charge of getting the models and the fittings and stuff for the for the men for the um for the launch party. So he invites the guys down to the house and there and the first thing he does is offer everybody a drink and pours himself one. So again, are we really feeling like Jeff has a serious drinking problem or do we feel like he just had a bad night? Anyway. So let's fast forward. I mean, let's rewind a little bit. So we go back to Tamika and this Gian lady. I really feel like Gian, Gian, I really feel like they are setting us up for something, y'all. Like, I feel like they keep building this storyline that something's going to happen. Because this is the third episode that her name has come up and Tamika throwing shade. And in this particular episode, you see where Barry meets with her because he, you know, respects her, her business sense and everything. And he's getting her, um, opinion on the business deal he wants to do and you see him and Tamika talking and Tamika's like well yeah you know I trust Barry and I don't have no problem with Gian and he's like you know but I'm like bitch you've been throwing shade at her for the last two episodes I know you got a problem with her you ain't got to try to clean it up now and lie about it you got a problem with this chick because you said last week that you feel like this woman is in love with your husband who wouldn't have a problem with that but Tamika, so we see Justin talking to um, Kelsey about moving in with his parents. And you can tell she's not comfortable with the idea. I wouldn't be either. I understand why. I mean, it's not like they're moving in because they're bums or anything of that nature. I mean, they're getting the house renovated and it doesn't make sense to stay in an apartment for three to four months. I mean, stay in a hotel for three to four months and all that good stuff. So I understand why it's happening. And we find out later on in the episode that Kelsey is not from New Orleans. She moved to New Orleans to be with Justin. So she doesn't really have a lot of other options. You know, it's not like she can call any of her friends or anything. At least that's the impression you get. If she moved in to be with him, you get the impression that that's not her home base, and she doesn't really have a lot of other options. Um, and they've been living together. So, they throw that out there. Um, I'm trying to see if anything really happened before we get to the jewelry party. Um, I took notes. Let me see. Because I don't think anything did. But I just want to make sure. Yeah, no. Alright, so we get to the jewelry party. I'm sorry, hold on. Oh, I had the heat on. It was hurt, burning my legs up. Because, you know, this weather is crazy. It go from hot to cold to hot to cold. So I had the little space heater on my legs because it got a little chilly because I got the heat turned down because it was 80 degrees yesterday. Anyway, y'all. Sidebar. Back to, back to this. So... We get to the jewelry party. And it looked like a nice, it was a nice venue. It was a nice um, atmosphere. You see Reagan and Jeff are working in the room. And Jeff is like, look, I know I got to make amends. I know that I'm on the hot seat. I'm in the doghouse. And I got to, you know, I know I got to do the damn thing. And you see he's doing it. And I love how they continuously are bringing in the culture of New Orleans. Because she, um, Reagan had a second line come through during the party. And I just thought that was just great. I thought it was wonderful to see the second line and see everybody dancing and stuff like that. So, about halfway through the party, Tamika's out on the balcony with Justin. And she starts talking to Justin about Kelsey again. Is she the one? Are you going to marry her? She was like, you know, y'all have been dating long enough by now that you know. You know when it's the one. You know when it's the one. And if she's not the one, then you need to stop playing with her because she wants to marry you. And she, she wants you to be the one. And you just need to stop playing games with her. And Justin is like, mind your fucking business. This don't have shit, like, my relationship don't have shit to do with you, and why are you worried about it? And I was thinking the same thing, like, this is the second time you've brought it up. Why are you so concerned with what Justin is doing with Kelsey? You clearly are not friends with Kelsey, because you was making some little smart comments about Kelsey before, you know, Tamika always throwing some shade at somebody. So y'all are clearly not friends. Why the fuck are you worried about what Kelsey's doing and what Justin and Kelsey are doing? And Tamika is like, well, I just think you need to just be honest with this girl and you just need to, you don't need to be leaving her hanging and her. And Justin is like, we ain't even been dating a year yet. She was like, yeah, but you know when she, you know when it's the one, you know when it's the one. First and foremost, 
Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't know when you when it's the one. After a year. Maybe you think it's the one, but you got other shit going on and you ain't ready to marry her. Like, he's about to move out of his house for four months to renovate. Like, maybe he wants to get some things in order before he asks this woman to marry him. Maybe it's none of your fucking business. And let me rewind for a minute. Pause that. We gotta rewind because I forgot something that happened earlier too. When Reagan and... When Reagan was talking to Jeff, when they were back at the apartment, Reagan made a comment, you know, well, I'm going to pack some bags and I'm going to be moving here for a while. See, and that's why you don't need to have a separate apartment because it makes it too easy to run away. Y'all had one really bad night. And again, I'm not privy to any relationship problems y'all had prior to what the cameras are showing. But based on what I know, you had one really big blow up, one really big night. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to move out for a couple of months into this apartment that I don't want you in no way. See, that tells me that y'all were having problems before. And that apartment was always going to be your escape plan. Like, that's what that tells me. And Tamika tells her the same thing. Like, I told you that that's why that apartment is not a good idea. Because it makes it just makes it too easy. And Reagan is asking Tamika about when her and Barry separated. What kind of brought them back together. And she said it was the kids. She said, you know, we decided to to work on it and to make it work for the kids. And Reagan's thing is, we don't have that. We don't have the kids as an anchor that's going to keep us together. And my thing is, kids should be a consideration, but they shouldn't be the reason. And I could be, you know, I know there are people out there who have children who might think differently. And I know people who have stayed together for the kids. And I'm not saying... That they shouldn't, like I said, they should be a consideration, but they shouldn't be the reason. Because then everybody's miserable and kids are not stupid. And they pick up on it and they know what's up. Done. Um, so back to the jewelry party. Sorry, I forgot about that part. But back to the jewelry party. So now Justin's pissed off at Tamika. And so here comes Kelsey out on the balcony. And Kelsey's like, well, what are y'all talking about? And Tamika's like, oh, you know, see, here's where a polite person would say, no, nah, we just talking some shit, you know, nothing big. But no, Tamika wants Kelsey to know the conversation, and she wants Kelsey to know what's going on. So, of course, she proceeds to tell Kelsey what the conversation is about, and then she puts words in Justin's mouth and embellishes. She's like, well, Justin said you're not the one. Justin ain't never say that. He never answered your question when you asked her, was she the one? He said that, you know, we're just, we're, we're in a good place right now. And we're just letting things move at the pace we're comfortable with. But he didn't say she wasn't the one. And that was a fucked up way to put that. So then, of course, Kelsey is standing there looking embarrassed, looking uncomfortable, looking like, whoa, what the fuck? And so, you know, Tamika's like, how does that make you feel? Bitch, what? Now you Dr. Phil? How does that make me feel? What? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? So, Justin is like, yo, I didn't say that. Like, why are you doing this? Like, why why are you making this out to be something that it's not? And so, then Reagan walks up. And Reagan's like, what's going on? You know, Reagan, because she's being hostess with the mostest. So, Reagan is like, well, what's up? What's going on here? What's the deal? And Justin is, you know, Justin proceeds to kind of tell her what's going on. And she was like, yo... I don't want anybody feeling uncomfortable. She was like, Tamika, this isn't the time or the place. You know, you can have that conversation later. But that's not what this is about tonight. And Tamika was like, why? Why can't I talk about it now? What's the problem? Well, first of all, because it's not your fucking business. That's the problem. Second of all, ask and answer. Like, they've, they've addressed you. You don't have to like their answers. But they've addressed what they're going to address. Third of all, this is a party, a jewelry party. Why are we having relationship issues on the on the balcony and why are you creating issues where they don't exist that man relationship ain't got nothing to do with you and i just don't understand why you still feel so vested in everybody else's situation um and so tamika you know reagan is like look tamika i need you to step off i need you to you know just go in there and have a drink like leave this alone let it be done you know she asked kelsey she was like are you feeling uncomfortable right now kelsey is like uh yeah and so she's like look kelsey's uncomfortable I don't want any of my guests to feel uncomfortable. This conversation is done. Let it go. So now Tamika walks off in the huff and her little feelings. She all mad. And John, you know, walks up. John got on a blazer with no shirt. Now let me tell y'all something. 
That chest was looking scrumptious. But I'm still fucking mad at you, John, because this whole situation is your fault. That argument, everybody getting drunk, Jeff jumping out the car, running through the goddamn swamp, that is your fault. And you still don't seem to find nothing wrong with what you did. But it's all your fault, John, even though you look good. You look good. So John decides that he's going to talk to Tamika and try to clear things up. Because he's like, I know Tamika's still mad at me about how things went down at the party. And they get to talking or whatever. And because, why am I yawning, y'all? Sorry. I apologize. And because Gianni, I mean, who is Gianni? Who the fuck is Gianni? Where'd that come from? Because John doesn't think he did anything wrong. He's sort of like taking it with a great assault like. Yeah, Tamika's mad at me because the rule is that I can't have a party and invite her husband and not invite her. So it's this other guy there who's a friend of John's. And John brings him, John brings other people into the conversation. The girl that he took out on a date last week is there, the non-date date. And she was like, because they're married, like that's respect, like that's being disrespectful that you would have a party, invite all these other women and, you know, not have his wife there. So of course the other guy was like, No, you're insecure. Well, Tamika was like, you know, people have trigger words. And for me, that's one of my trigger words. You call me insecure, that sets me off. Probably because you're insecure. But it's a hit dog going bark. Or however that saying goes. Probably because you're insecure. But anyway, so she says that that's one of her triggers. So Barry comes over there and Barry's like, nah, you know, again, he's trying to smooth it over. He was like, nah, I don't think it's about being insecure. I think it's just, you know, everything is everything. He was like, why are we talking about it now? Let's move on. We having a good time. That already happened. Like he's trying to end the conversation. So the guy, as he's walking off, he yells, well, I only got one word, insecure. And Tamika was like, I don't remember what Tamika said, but Tamika said something back to him. And then his response was, well, at least I don't look like a parrot. No, she said, why are you walking off? You just repeating stuff, sounding like a parrot. And he was like, well, at least I don't look like one. So now we're in fifth grade, kindergarten, five years old. So... Barry's like, yo, man, that's my wife. You're not going to disrespect my wife. And then this dude starts talking about hit me. Just as long as he don't hit me. As long as he'll hit me because I will sue him. I will buy a house on him. I will get that Versace belt he had. Like, he starts, and everything was, I will sue, I will sue, I will sue. And from his mannerisms, you get, if I had to make an assumption, I would say he was gay. And the only reason why I bring that up is because Barry proceeds to call him the F word. And I was like, yep, that's going to come back. That's going to be a problem. That's going to come back and be a problem. And of course, John and everybody is pulling Barry back like it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You know, and the dude is still yelling, I will sue you. I will sue you. And I feel like because he saw cameras, before, because I feel like he was the guy, the other guy that yelled paired, I feel like he was performing for the cameras. And I felt like he is one of those people like, like, um, that. <laughs> Andrew Caldwell earlier this week talking with the Starbucks lady talking about he gonna sue Starbucks because the lady pushed him. You know, I feel like he might be one of those type of people that's always just looking for something. And he was inappropriate. He was inappropriate to call that woman, you know, to tell her she looked like a parrot. And then he was inappropriate with the whole just don't hit me, I'll sue you, I'll sue you, I'll sue you thing. But Barry, you gotta do better. Like you can't respond. You can't jump to the bait. Like you knew what this dude was doing. You can't jump. You can't fall for it. You can't fall for the banana in the tailpipe because it's bullshit. But, um, and that's where the episode ends. So next week, you can see in the previews, like I said, the whole F word thing is going to come back and some other stuff happens. But, um, yeah, this episode, it was interesting, I guess, to give you some more background on people's situation and people's life. But I think the Gian Tamika thing is going to really be a problem. I think they're building us up to something. Um... And we're going to keep an eye on Jeff and Reagan and their marital situation. Y'all tell me what y'all think in them comments.